Hello everyone. In this video, we will go through a detailed explanation of Book Nine of Paradise Lost, written by John Milton. Now, this is an epic. It's a very long poem, so I won't be going through a line by line explanation. But I'll make sure that all the important lines and important details are explained. So, Paradise Lost is an epic which was written in the seventeenth century by John Milton. Uh, Milton was a very intelligent. Even as a kid, he was very serious. He was very intelligent. Intelligent in the sense he knew a lot of languages. He could write English, Latin, Greek, French, Spanish, Dutch, Italian, Hebrew, and a lot more. So he was very brilliant, and he was also a very strong Protestant. He supported the Parliament. So all his works were either religious or political. and it was milton's dream to write a uh, epic and he was not simply ready to write it on the spot he had spent years and years and years preparing for this epic it is said that he took almost 6 years to prepare for this epic paradise lost and he thought about a lot of topics before writing he thought about topics from the bible from british history but he was not satisfied with any of this as all this was going on in 1652 when milton was 43 years old he became blind but milton was not ready to give up he continued writing uh, his poem on his blindness was one such work he wrote after he had become blind so even paradise lost he wrote this epic the paradise lost after he had become blind so here are a few years which are important in 1657 milton started to write paradise lost remember he was blind now in 1665 he completed writing the epic and in 1667 he published his work the paradise lost so you have to remember the year in which milton published paradise lost that is 1667 now this was the first edition the second edition was published in 1674 I told you Paradise Lost is an epic. It is such a long poem. It consists of twelve books, and I have mentioned the main essence of each of these books in very short words here, because to understand our book Nayan, it is important to know the story, the background story. So Paradise Lost is based on a biblical story. Now the story is that, in short, I'll just give you a small background. So in the Bible, the story goes like this. Uh, god creates earth he creates everything on earth and he decides that he is going to create man out of clay mud and he creates man and then he realizes that man is alone so he needs a companion and he creates a woman so the man is named adam and woman is named eve adam and eve now adam and eve were very close to god god um, god treasured them a lot So God gave Adam and Eve the best place on the earth. He created a paradise on earth which was called the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden was given to Adam and Eve and they were asked to enjoy and eat all the fruits in the garden except for the fruit of one tree. There was a tree in the middle of the garden called Tree of Life and Adam and Eve were forbidden told not to eat the fruit of only this tree this was the only condition they had in order to live in the garden of eden and um, in the heaven there were a group of angels now there are a lot of angels in heaven among them a group of angels uh, were envious that god had a higher position than them so they wanted to rebel against god they wanted to rule over heaven so they fought against god and other angels so what god did was he put all these angels into hell and these angels are called fallen angels these angels were put into hell then they became the devils and among them the leader of this group is satan so satan decided that he will get revenge and he comes to the garden of eden he knew that he couldn't take revenge on god directly so he decided to take revenge on god by destructing or destroying the man he created so he came to the garden of eden and by influencing eve the woman 
Satan made Eve eat the forbidden fruit. Remember the tree in the middle of the garden of which they are not supposed to eat the fruit. So Satan made Eve eat this forbidden fruit and Eve also gave this to her husband Adam and both of them got expelled from the paradise, the paradise on earth, the garden of Eden. So this is the biblical story. Now, this is the same story that John Milton uses in Paradise Lost. So, here we have 12 books. In the first book, John Milton talks about how the angels were all put into hell. Now, uh, they are all thrown out of heaven. So, they didn't know what to do. They were in hell and they didn't know what to do. So, Satan, he becomes the leader. Uh, it's not that they elected Satan as the leader. He uh, takes up the responsibility and he decides to create a pandemonium. Pandemonium is just like they build their own hell. Uh, they create their own, just like how we create our house. They create their own dwelling place. And in the second book, in the hell, there is a meeting by all these fallen angels. They all sit together for a meeting and they decide about how to take revenge on God. So uh, some of the fallen angels say that they shouldn't go for revenge because God is almighty, he is all powerful, we can never take revenge on him. Uh, but some other uh, angels, fallen angels, they disagree. So they were planning about this revenge. In the third book, uh, it is happening in the heaven. God is warning about Satan and the other fallen angels. He talks about uh, Satan's plan to his son. God knows everything. So he is talking about all this to uh, his son. In the fourth book, we are introduced to Adam and Eve who are living happily, peacefully in the Garden of Eden. In the fifth book, we have a discussion between Raphael who is an angel in heaven and Adam. So Raphael has come as per God's uh, his uh, command. Raphael has come to Garden of Eden to warn Adam that these things could happen. Satan would come, he will tell you all these things and he will make you eat this fruit. So don't fall into any temptations. So he has come to warn Adam. So there is a discussion and Adam is asking a lot of doubts to Raphael about how all this happened and everything. So in the sixth book, Raphael tells about what has happened, the battle, how all these angels revolted against God and God put them out of heaven. Now they are in the hell. All the story, the battle scenes are explained in book six. In book seven, uh, we get to know about God's creation, how God created everything, how God created Adam. And then uh, in the seventh day, God rested. And in the eighth book, we understand why and how God created Eve as a companion for Adam. And the ninth book that we will discuss now, this is the most dramatic of all the books, The Fall of Man. How even after all these warnings, how Satan convinced uh, Eve and Adam to eat this fruit which was forbidden for them. So this is the most dramatic book and after this we see the fall of man. Because after this, Adam and Eve have no choice. They have to leave the Garden of Eden uh, because that was the condition that they shouldn't eat this. So that is the fall of man in book 9 that we will discuss in the video. And in book 10, we see reconciliation. Even though God put them out of Garden of Eden, uh, God did not leave them. He did not completely ignore them. He told them that you will have a lot of hardships on earth. But I will send my son. Christ to the earth and he will save you from all your sins. Uh, that is why we celebrate Christmas, the birth of Christ. And in uh, 11th book, book 11, we see God tells them about the future of mankind. This is what is going to happen up to the flood, Noah's flood, ark and everything. Up to then, God tells them about everything that is going to happen. And in book 12, we see the birth of Christ. So that was just a quick uh, introduction just to know what we are going to deal with in book 9. Now we will move on to book 9 of Paradise Lost. Now in the previous books, that is in book 7, book 8, John Milton was talking about God's creation of earth, of Garden of Eden, how he created man and how he created Eve, a woman as companion. So all these things, how God was very friendly with them, how they shared a good friendship, God treasured them. So all these were talked about in the previous books. 
So now Milton in book 9 he begins by saying that I have talked enough about the friendship of God and the angels with this Adam and Eve in garden of eden now i am going to talk about uh, a very tragic story a story which is a lot more heroic i am going to talk about a hero and we all know that it is satan so john milton is going to talk about the heroic story of satan now this has been will disputed by a lot of critics that how can satan be represented as the hero of a work and uh, satan is glorified a lot here if you could read paradise lost i would suggest that it's a very interesting read you will uh, you will be uh, surprised at how uh, heroic satan is presented here in this poem in this epic okay so anyway he decides to talk about the story and he says about the heroic qualities that satan has that is patience and heroic martyrdom and before telling us about this heroic story of satan there is an invocation to his muse his muse is urania and he says that these lines were actually not written by me this was actually told by my muse she made me write this so it's as if these lines are not his it was actually told by his muse and he had to write it down so there is this short introduction that he gives and now the story begins and we have a, it's like a film it's like watching a movie you can imagine in your mind when i say this and it's it's a lot 100 times better when you read the poem by yourself so this is how it begins the sun has gone down the sun has set the evening star has come so it's night and uh, earlier uh, satan had already tried once to get into garden of eden to come to earth Uh, get into garden of eden and influence our adam and eve to eat this forbidden fruit but when he tried to enter earth itself he was put out by angel gabriel so uh, this time uh, satan has returned and he did not he knew that it's not going to be easy so he did not return so fast he did not uh, get into earth so fast for seven nights he kept observing the earth he kept observing which angel is guarding which place there were a lot of angels cherubians they were all guarding uh, earth from different sides so satan had made his mind that he will take revenge and on the eighth night after all observing everything he found out the best place to get in that is he saw this river tigris this river had rose as a fountain near this tree of life in garden of eden this is the tree Uh, about which we talked about adam and eve are not allowed to eat the fruit of this tree so there is a fountain near the tree of life and uh, you might have seen near fountains because of the pressure of the water falling there will be mist rising mist water uh, rising as mist near the fountain so satan endured earth as this rising mist through this rising mist don't ask me how but this is how milton explains the whole process and after this the step 2 of his plan was to find a creature any creature on earth in which he could hide so that others won't find him other angels won't find him roaming around so he wanted to find a creature and he thought about every creature he saw on the earth and the best creature the fit vessel that he could find was the serpent the snake he chose the snake because he thought that nobody is going to doubt even if the snake started to act a bit different nobody will have any suspicions but the problem was that he felt very bad he had a lot of pain grief that he had to uh, get into a creature like a snake such a lowly creature he was uh, one of those angels who fought against god to get power control of heaven and now he is on earth and uh, he cannot imagine being in the body of the snake so he had a lot of pain and there was this dilemma confusion in his mind but then he thought about all these things that happened the terrestrial heaven he was in the garden of eden he calls garden of eden the terrestrial heaven the heaven on earth and then he uh, talks about adam how god created adam and he became god's new favorite new favorite of heaven 
he was the man who was made of clay and uh, god then uh, soon god became uh, only obsessed with adam and he did not give equal importance to it seems that satan felt all this so he felt he remembered all this and he decided he remembered why he wanted revenge so he decided that yes uh, let it be the serpent he is going to enter it and then he entered the serpent the serpent was sleeping he entered the serpent through its mouth and he waited he did not this is one of the uh, you remember the qualities two heroic qualities we talked about patience and satan waited he did not quickly rush to adam and eve he waited for the right time so all that was happening at night remember on the eighth night that was when uh, satan came into the garden of eden now the next morning we see adam and eve now these both they were working in the garden uh, see the garden of eden uh, was such a garden that the plants the trees everything grew so fast there were always fruits and always flowers uh, even if you cut and trim all the branches it it uh, grows so fast so they always had to it was always so green it was always uh, full of uh fruits and vegetables and flowers that always adam and eve had to cut and trim and keep all the plants properly so they were working together in the garden of eden so suddenly eve the woman she has a thought and she tells her husband adam uh let us divide our labors see if we both move together in the same way we will be only able to complete this area but if we could both move in different uh paths different ways then we can finish our work much easily that is what she was telling adam and once we have completed all this work we can sit together we can spend more time together talk and stay together when adam hears this he tells eve that see you are the best companion i have on earth and this is a great idea that you have put forward very uh, compassionately he compliments eve and he tells eve see god has not uh, pressured us to do this work there is no time limit for us to complete this work so if you stay with me there might be a lot of dangers if you go alone if you stay with me as your husband i will be here to protect you so let's stay together soon we will have kids of our own and our children also will start helping us so let's spend more time together by staying together and working hearing this eve becomes a little uneasy and she tells adam that i overheard Uh, when angel raphael came here to warn you about satan the malicious foe um, so in the earlier books when we were discussing about the 12 books i had told about angel raphael coming to warn adam about satan so eve was hearing all this and she feels bad and she tells adam see i feel bad that you are doubting my firmness that you think that i could be misled by satan and his tricks and then adam tells her again he is very understanding he is very compassionate and he tells her see this is not the case it's not that i doubt you if satan finds us alone he might try see he is this person who was able to convince the other angels in the heaven to fight against god what are we we are only humans so we should be more careful that is what adam told her and this was not a good enough answer for eve uh, to feel that she could be influenced or convinced by satan uh, she felt that to always be frightened of satan how can we be happy in the garden of eden and she tells adam that if we can't defend ourselves if we can't protect ourselves then how can we call ourselves god's perfect creation we are not perfect then if we can't protect us then how are we perfect so uh, somehow eve starts to question god's creation that uh, there is something imperfect about god's creation and as soon as adam hears this he responds feverently he was um, a bit not frightened but something was off he responded because eve was now criticizing god and 
Adam is trying to explain to Eve. See, God has given us the power of will. Adam is trying to tell her that it's not that God has not created us perfectly. God has perfectly created us. He knows that there is danger. But God has given us the choice. He is not pressurizing or forcing us to do what he thinks is right. He has given us the choice to do what we think is right. So, we are perfect. He has given us complete control. Man is free to choose. That is what Adam tells Eve. So if we both are together, we both will be able to keep each other protected. I will be able to protect you and you will be able to protect me. But again, if you think that we have to part our ways, if we have to go different ways and do this work, if that is what you think is right. Now Adam is very humble. Uh, he is very loving towards his wife. It's not There is not even a uh, the slightest anger in his voice the slightest discomfort or hatred or any such feeling of uh, negative feeling in his voice. It's completely passionate, completely loving and caring that uh, Adam is towards Eve. So he says, if that is what you think is right, let's do as you say. I have told you the reason, this was the reason. And if you think you have to go, then go. And even after hearing these reasons from Adam, Eve was not ready to change her opinion. She held on to her opinion. And then she says, Satan will be ashamed that he cannot influence even the weaker sex, that he couldn't even influence me. And saying this, she takes her hand very softly, slowly from her husband's hand and she moves away like a goddess. Now Milton talks about Eve's appearance uh, she is very majestic, very royal. She looks like a goddess. She moves away from Adam. Uh, Eve leaves and Adam looks at Eve moving away from him. So they had decided that both will come back by noon. This was morning. By noon they will come back and then they will be together. So all this while our Satan who is now in the body of the serpent, he is thinking about his plans. And he wishes that uh, he wants to find Adam and Eve, but he wishes and he thinks that maybe he is wishing it in vain that he wants to find them separately. He wants to uh, find one of them, either Adam or Eve separately so that his plan would uh, work out well. But Satan believes that there couldn't be a chance that Eve and Adam would walk separately. They are always together. And that is when he sees Eve, who is uh, cutting and trimming all the flowers and plants. And when Satan looks at her, she is standing in midst of all these flowers. And she looked like a goddess. She looked so angelic. She looked so heavenly, so feminine, that uh, she looked so beautiful that Satan, for a moment, he forgot why he had come there. What was all this revenge about? He forgot about his plans of revenge seeing the beauty of Eve. And then suddenly he remembers that he is here for a plan, he is here for revenge and he decides that he should not let go of this opportunity. There may not be another opportunity where he would get Eve or Adam separately. And Eve is um, better, she is more easier to be influenced than Adam. That is what Satan felt. So now when she is away from her husband, this is the best chance now he has to use it and he decides to go to Eve. And the enemy of mankind, that's what Milton calls the serpent, the enemy of mankind moves towards Eve. And even when he is moving, Milton says he was very majestic. Uh, Milton has put almost 10-15 lines. He has written almost 15 lines about the majesty of the serpent. He had eyes like red jewels. His body had a golden glow. Uh, he did not crawl on the ground like the normal snakes. He would always keep uh, his head up like cobras would do. Uh, he did not crawl. Uh, such descriptions about the majesty, the grace of the serpent is given in the poem. Now the serpent was very shrewd and cunning. Uh, he could have directly went and talked to Eve. But he wanted to pretend that it would be his pleasure to talk to Eve. He looked very frightened that uh, he wanted Eve to notice him. All these acting and pretending was going on. And Eve 
thought it's normal because all animals in Aden liked her and it was not something so unusual that a serpent was moving behind her so she did not give it much importance and that is when the serpent started to talk and he started telling eve that she was very beautiful she is somebody who is served by gods and angels in heaven and the serpent says he feels so sad that there is only adam here who is there to admire and praise you for your beauty and when eve heard this eve became very curious shockingly surprised that a serpent a snake could talk because according to what she knows only man is capable of talking only man is capable of making sense so sense and speech these two powers are only given to man all the other animals all the other brutes in the garden of eden were supposed to be mute they were not supposed to talk they were not supposed to think make sense of anything so she asked the serpent and as if revealing his deepest uh, secret the serpent says that there is this tree called tree of knowledge in the middle of garden of eden it has beautiful red and golden colored uh, fruits which were pleasant smelling and which are extremely delicious and i ate these fruits actually uh, the other animals were not able to get these fruits from the tree because they were very high but i could wind up the tree the snakes could uh, coil and climb the trees so that is how i got up the tree and got this fruit and once i got this fruit once i ate this fruit i changed i got the power to speak i got the power to think and since he got this reasoning power he started to examine heaven and hell for the most valuable thing for the most beautiful thing and he couldn't find anything or any one more beautiful than eve so he's kind of flattering eve he wants to make her feel uh, that he is in awe with her beauty so there is nothing more beautiful than you that is what he tells her and so i have come here to worship you and to admire your beauty now hearing all this eve has become more and more curious she wants to know where the fruit is so she tells uh, satan the serpent who has disguised himself as the serpent that uh, she has heard a lot about the power of the fruit and it seems like you are saying uh, truth because the power of the truth has been proved in you otherwise the serpent like you couldn't have talked so please lead the way please show me where this fruit this tree that you are talking about is and the satan was very happy because his plan to convince her has become successful it seems like eve has almost fallen into the trap so um, he tells her okay i can uh, lead you and he takes her there and when eve reaches the tree of knowledge she looks at it and she says fruitless to me the fruit be here in excess the tree is full of fruits but she says it's as if there are no fruits here for me because i have been told by god that i should not eat or even touch this fruit from the tree of knowledge and if i do so i'll die so this is the order this is the command that i have been received from god so even though there are a lot of fruits on the tree i'm not supposed to eat any of them and she says this is the only one rule we have from god we can eat all the fruits from all the other trees in eden we can decide what we want to do we can decide what we do not want to do except for this this is the only condition we have from god now satan did not want to spoil all his plan now since he has reached till here he knew that if he would push him a little bit she would be able to he would be able to make her eat the fruit so he became very bold till now he seemed like a frightened uh, snake trying to admire eve's beauty and all but now he became very bold and all of a sudden he has all this confidence and he is giving eve a speech he is giving a lot of arguments about why she should eat this fruit so first she begins with the most obvious fact that see you say that you would die if you eat this fruit i have eaten the fruit and i am alive and secondly he asks will this opportunity be shut to man who is the favorite of god 
which is open to beast now if animals could eat this fruit why can't god's favorite eat this and again will god punish his most favorite adam and eve for such a silly thing for such a petty deed and he says if you eat this fruit from the tree of knowledge you will have knowledge about what is good and what is evil and after getting this knowledge you can then stop uh, prevent all evil from happening you can stop doing what is evil so actually that is good for you and then again he asks so did god create it only so that you can stand here and admire it he might have created uh, the whole tree of knowledge so that you can eat it and again uh, maybe god do not want you to be like god so that is why he told you not to eat it and then again he says can this knowledge hurt god if you get some knowledge from this tree of knowledge is that going to hurt your almighty god in any way and finally he asks is your god jealous that you will get this knowledge from this tree of knowledge so all these arguments he is continuously giving a lot of arguments to eve to make her eat the fruit somehow and whatever he was telling seemed so logical it seemed so rational and it was also noon by now remember uh, eve had promised adam that she will be going back by noon and it was already noon now and she was very hungry plus all these thoughts put into her head by satan so she did not think much she plucked the fruit and ate and as soon as she took her first bite the serpent went away to a thicket Satan knew that his work here is over he did not want to stay there anymore he left and eve she started to eat very greedily it was very intoxicating she couldn't stop eating and she uh, felt like she is not any more ignorant she has got a lot of knowledge and she decided to take care of this tree every day from now on and suddenly a lot of questions started to come to her the first person to come to her mind was obviously adam what will she tell him she told that she will protect herself but now what has happened what will she tell him and then she thought what if god has seen her doing this uh, will god punish her and again she thought she has all this knowledge now from the tree of knowledge about good and evil uh, she should keep it to herself she shouldn't tell adam because then adam also will get the same knowledge she did not want that she wanted equality she thought uh, she was thought to be the weaker sex now with all this knowledge she will become as strong as adam so she was not going to tell adam about what has happened and then suddenly again another thought what if god gives adam another eve god punishes her puts her out of garden of eden and gives adam another eve now that thought was unbearable to her she did not want to leave her adam so what she did was she decided to give this fruit to adam and make him eat too so that they both will be together in whatever punishment they get now all this time adam on the other side was waiting for eve with a garland and since she was late for such a long time he knew something was wrong so he went in search of eve and found her on the way back from tree of knowledge and as soon as eve sees adam she runs to him with hands full of these fruits and uh, she tells adam that she really missed him and she's never going to part with him again and the reason why she was late is because of the tree of knowledge as we are threatened we are not going to die if we eat this fruit like the serpent told the serpent ate the fruit and it did not die instead it got voice human voice and human sense so what have i done i have also eaten this and eve told him that i also should be very happy but since i am alone you are not with me i couldn't be happy so i want you to eat this so we both could be happy together and hearing all this our adam was standing blank he was struck by horror his face became pale he had a garland of flowers made for eve it fell from his hands but then adam was very loving he did not scold or accuse eve and he told her there are a lot of uh, very romantic uh, very uh, calming pleasant sentences from adam he says flesh of flesh bone of my bone thou art and from the state my never shall be parted bliss or woe you are made from my bone you are my flesh so even if 
uh it is a bliss even if it is happiness or if it is sufferings i will never part from you i'll never go separate from you and he says consort with the death is to me as life if uh, i could be with you in death then that death is like life to me and again there is this uh, line to lose the would be to lose myself so adam was so much in love with eve and because of that he did not want to go separate from her so he decided that he is uh, going to eat it and eve told him not to worry because this is not death your eyes will open you will have a new life and i am telling you from my experience you can freely ta- taste it and she embraced him and she started to cry uh, because she she tells him that it is through this fruit that i got to know how much you love me and adam ate this fruit and just as he ate this uh, he started to feel very intoxicated uh, the fruit kind of invoked a carnal desire he wanted to get physical with eve both eve and adam they were burning in lust and adam felt that he has never seen eve so beautiful like this till now so you can see uh, right from when eve ate this fruit one by one there are a lot of sins that is uh, being uh, introduced by melton here first when she was eating uh, she was very uh, intoxicatedly eating we can see gluttony and then there is this jealousy in her she did not want to give the fruit to adam because adam would be also as powerful as knowledgeable as her now uh, there is less in them now after eating the fruit and soon they feel naked they feel ashamed there is shame in them they started to feel that they have done something bad that they are naked there is a lot of shame in them and because of this guilt both adam and eve they try to cover themselves they try to hide somewhere and uh, then suddenly all these negative emotions anger hate mistrust suspicion uh, earlier you remember adam was very lovey dovey with eve uh, he was telling that if death is how i can be together with you then death is life for me you are made out of my flesh uh, all these beautiful lines were told by adam now all of a sudden adam became very rude he started accusing eve for bringing the fruit to him and he started telling that eve should be blamed because she was the first one who ate it i would have lived here happily but she bought it to me why should i be punished for the mistake that she did and of course eve was not ready to give up so they both started to fight and argue for hours and hours and hours they were fighting and arguing about things that did not have any importance so somehow the fruit the forbidden fruit seems to have changed both adam and eve and that's how book 9 of paradise lost is ended by john milton so yes milton is portraying satan as the hero of this epic but still we find his degeneration throughout as we read these lines because satan in the beginning he was one of the angels who stood along with god in heaven but then they he wanted more he wanted to be god like he wanted the control and power and uh, after his revolt he was uh, put into hell as one of the fallen angels and again from there he wanted revenge and he had to become a serpent even lower than the fallen angels so even though he he feels that he is uh, he is trying his best yes he is trying his best even though he feels that uh, he is doing all this to gain power to become someone who is in control he is actually losing it all he is actually degenerating himself and adam could be seen as one of those tragic heroes because he was perfect he was perfect in every sense of the word but his only flaw his only flaw in his character was his passion for his wife passion for eve and only because of that he faced his downfall and eve according to me i think eve wanted to be an equal to adam not the weaker sex not somebody made out of adam but an equal to adam from the beginning she wants to show adam that she is not weak 
she is not someone who wants her uh, husband's protection always and even when satan tried to convince her maybe the reason why she fell for it because uh, is it might be because uh, satan kept telling her that he couldn't find anyone who is more beautiful who should be admired more than her in all of heaven and earth so she might have fallen for uh, this new um, compliment that she got from the serpent and even when she ate this forbidden fruit she did not want it to give it to adam in the first place because she thought that not giving it to him would make her an equal to him anyway milton has very dramatically presented the story of the fall of man and the character development is exceptional the theme of man's disobedience and his uh, fall from the heaven that is the major theme and the theme is very evident in the poem as we read through this book book 9 of paradise lost so that's it i hope you have understood uh, it is quite a long video but it is interesting too the story is actually very fascinating that milton has interpreted a biblical story like this giving satan a lot of importance making satan the hero of his epic so uh, it is quite fascinating and interesting i hope uh, you don't get bored with this long video and if the video was useful to you please let me know in the comment section please like share and subscribe thank you so much for watching